<gasps> guys hey everyone welcome to my channel it's your girl chloe if this is your very first time checking into one of my videos then welcome make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to hit the bell so that you're always notified when i post here on the tube and if this is your 11th time checking into one of my videos then thank you for your continued support i love you i know it's been a really long time about eight months since I've been posting on YouTube, but you know, hey, life happens. So I'm gonna be doing an update. I'm gonna tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about how I am doing on my own hair growth challenge. And if you're not aware of it, it's hashtag growth them inches 2019. I have more support here on YouTube for the actual growth challenge. So make sure you comment down below how you are doing on the growth challenge. And if you haven't joined yet, you can join anytime. It's a year long challenge, but it will be done on this channel by January of 2020. So let's jump right into it. So rule number one was no heat. The only exception for this rule was using a hooded dryer to set your style for or for deep conditioning. I'm gonna just take on this first section. And the mirror's behind the camera, so if you wonder why I'm looking over here and talking to you over here, that's what's going on. So I think I'll be doing pretty good on the no heat challenge. The only times that heat has been used on my hair is when I've gone to get it professionally trimmed. Now, I prefer for my hair to get, you know, trimmed on stretched hair for a couple reasons. One, I believe like when your hair is curly, split ends and knots and things like that are very um, easily masked. Um, you really can't tell you have split ends or curly hair until it's almost too late and the breakage is like out of control. So I actually prefer going to a stylist who's gonna trim my curly hair in a blow dried state. It's not like I'm getting it straightened to get it blow dried or to get it trimmed because straightened doesn't fall the same way as curly does but it's a good intermediate because you're able to see um, the actual split ends so you don't cut too much or you don't cut too little. And then you also still see how the texture kind of falls because there's still a little bit of texture left in the hair. So I actually prefer for my hair to be, um, to be stretched in a blow, a blow out or blow dry state when I'm getting a trim. So I have used or professionals have used heat on my hair for that reason. Um, other than that, I haven't used heat on my hair except for the reasons or for the the reasons that I said were okay for the challenge, being um, setting my hair for a style, which I've done um, actually not even that often because I I just don't prefer that method. I prefer to let my hair air dry because I think I get more definition that way. But uh, yeah, so on that rule, I think I've done pretty well. I, I would say that I did okay because, you know, you gotta get trims and if your stylist stretched your hair to trim, then I feel like that's okay. So you can find me in the comments. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't find me in the comments or you'll get blocked. <laughs> anyway, now let's go on to rule number two. Rule number two. I'm just going to just come right out the gate and say that I absolutely positively failed on this one. If you're following along all the rules and you already can tell from what you're looking at in the camera that I probably failed at this rule. Okay, let's just get into it. You know, you're in trouble and your mama calls you out and she's trying to give you the opportunity to, to spill the beads before she just calls you out on your mess. That's me right now because I know, okay, anyway. Rule number two was no bleaching or permanent color services. Basically, no coloring service that requires high lifting of your cuticles, i.e. lightening your hair. Exception, temporary color rinses. So let's just do a comparison, why don't we? One side is now. The other side is when I made the hair challenge video. So you probably noticed something a little different. My hair is much lighter than it was eight months ago. And I can explain. Okay, I can't explain. I broke the rule, y'all. I broke the rule. I broke the rule. Okay, so my husband went on deployment. He came back 
in May. And I wanted to do something special with my hair, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be extra. So I wanted to get a more multi-dimensional color, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to take that beautiful auburn cinnamon type color we had going on and make it multi-dimensional. And this is what my hair ended up looking like after I went to get it done. Now that required, okay, that was permanent hair color and it required bleach or lightener as stylists like to say because bleach is such a harsh word, okay? But it's the same thing. They had to highly lift my color. I was literally a platinum blonde when they finished lifting my hair. And then they had to reapply, uh, tone it with a uh, permanent hair color. So I broke the rule, period. Um, but that's how my hair looked at the end of the surface. It was beautiful. I liked it. It was a little too orange for me. It probably doesn't look very orange in this picture. But in this picture, when my husband came back from deployment, you can see better just how orange it was. It was bold it was very bold like i know what i have right now is bold but that was a whole nother level and i liked it a lot um i paid a, a, a nice coin for it okay um <laughs> i paid a pretty little penny for it and um, when my husband i got it done about a week before my husband came back from deployment so you know we're at the hotel when my husband comes home and there's a nice pool and I'm like, yo, I want to go swimming. And Tyrell, my husband, was like, babe, don't be getting in the pool because I don't want to hear nothing about how you complaining about having to do your hair again, you know, shampoo and take care of your curly hair with this terrible hotel product. So I'm like, man, I'm grown. Don't worry about me. I got this. And so I was like, man, psh, listen to your husband now. Listen to your husband. He be know what we're talking about most of the time. You know what I mean? Anyway, so we go to the pool. I think I'm a mermaid. I'm all under the water. I'm swimming. I'm having the best time. I come up from the water and I am blonde. <laughs> so all that beautiful multi-dimensional custom color literally washed down the drain. It was gone like and I really didn't notice it to maybe maybe the next day after I had washed it and styled it and everything because it was late that night when we went back I think and I just didn't pay any attention but it was she's blonde <laughs> it like lifted all the way back like of course not to the platinum blonde before it was toned like you still have obviously a lot of that warmth and orange uh, kind of brassiness almost that was undertones, you know, that was underneath the pigment that was put on my hair. But um, yeah, I'm blonde now. So technically I bleached my hair twice because I did it once in a professional setting, which was already against the rules. I, how you gonna make a challenge and not follow your own rules? Anyway, already did that wrong. I already did that by going, you know, bleached it by going to professional. And then I technically bleached it again by going swimming a week later because chlorine is bleach, lift your hair. Of course, it's not as harsh as like, you know, the actual lightning process in the salon, but it definitely obviously does the same thing. It lifted all that color with one time swimming. And we weren't in the water long, but if you go on under and your hair is getting saturated, baby girl, you're bleaching your hair, period. Which is also why it's important to shampoo your hair when you get out of the pool because you are legitimately bleaching your hair and you want to get all that chlorine, that excess chlorine out. You want to neutralize it, keep it, you know, stop it from acting on your hair strands. But yeah, so I completely broke Rule number two. So rule number three was shampoo and deep condition one to two times a week. This includes protein treatments. I think I did pretty good on that as well. I have shampooed my hair regularly for one to two times a week. Um, deep conditioning, I deep condition every time I shampoo. Um, I think at one point I did run out of deep conditioner, so I was using regular conditioner maybe once or twice over this last eight months. So I, I think I did pretty well um, in that, right? The protein treatments, I've only done one protein treatment since 
uh, the challenge started, but I have more of the products, so I'm gonna do better by getting on that, because at one point I was lacking protein in my hair, I was lacking bounce, but after I do the protein treatment, everything bounced right back, and so um, when I see my hair trying to go limp and lifeless again, I'm gonna go back and do another protein treatment. Uh, comment down below if you want me to do a video on me doing the protein treatment. I feel like there are a bajillion videos like that already on YouTube in the YouTube verse. But if you would like for me to do it on my channel, just let your girl know. I have been doing well on that room. Been doing pretty well on that one. Check. So now we're gonna move on to rule number four. Rule number four was protective style often and when you're not protective styling, do manipulation, do low manipulation styles. That means no manipulation of dry hair between wash days. I've also been doing really good on that as well. I believe I've done uh, several protective styles. My protective styles of choice have been messy buns. I've been doing cornrows. I also did a sewing on myself. I think my husband was on deployment at that time as well. Um, and that was also a good um, way to scratch the temporary color itch um, because I wanted my black hair again for a time. So I had done my hair in a sewing with black hair. I'll put a picture right there. And so, and I did, I played with length too. I also was about to cut my hair off because I just get to that point. It feels like every time my hair gets to this length or every time I start to start growing my hair out, I always seem to just like, want to chop it off but I'm resisting the urge because I just want to see how long my hair can grow potentially and um yeah and I also did knotless box braids she was cute <laughs> she was cute don't she was cute anyway did knotless box braids I wore those for about five weeks and yeah I really enjoyed those as well the only thing about rule number four that I will say I didn't really break but I kind of pushed the limits was that I said protective style should not cause tension or bumpy scalp or prevent moisturization of your natural hair. So only one of the protective styles that I've done and that I mentioned today actually caused what I think would be tension or irritation in my scalp and that was a knotless box braids. Now knotless box braids use a lot less extensions than or less you know weaving hair than the knotted box braids or the original traditional box braids. However, comma, these ones were still very heavy for me. Like it got to about halfway, my stylist was about halfway doing my box braids and my neck was already like, um, excuse me, <laughs> we didn't discuss this. But I did notice in the back of my head where my hair just tends to be very fine and just prone to breakage. Anyway, I had a bunch of uh, braids bumps, tension bumps. Um, my edges were very, very in pain. I had painful sore spots all over my scalp, which I never usually have. Um, but I knew it was from the tension because it was a brand new feeling that came as soon as I got the braids and left when I took them out. So that was one thing. I did not like it for that reason. Also, my braids were super long, like really past my butt. And I'm 5'10", so that's, that's a lot of hair. And so, I mean, it was a lot of tension. It was to the point where I was sleeping and rolling on my braids and waking up because I was snatching my hair. Girl, that was cute, but it wasn't, it was not for free. It was at a cost, okay? So uh, that's one thing I will say about the knotless box braids, but it's my first time trying them. I had no idea. I haven't had box braids at all, let alone knotless ones, and I just wanted to try something new. I did enjoy the style. They were very beautiful and well executed, but yeah, they were really heavy for my scalp and did, you know, provide, you know, did cause some of those tension bumps. Rule number five was trim only three times a year max. I still stand by this rule. I think that you should be doing this rule if you're doing this challenge, unless you're like me and you decided to bleach your hair and now your hair breaks off at a more expedient rate and now you have to keep up with <laughs> the breakage and cut it off before it, it travels up your strands. <laughs> so in other words, because I bleached my hair, it is now more needy in terms of trims. I need to get them more often. So whereas I may have been able to stretch them before, three times a year, four times a year max, now my hair is in a state where 
even when it's healthy, even when it still has elasticity and it's got a protein moisture balance, et cetera, et cetera, it's still gonna be breaking off and um, experiencing wear and tear at a faster rate. And so I'm gonna have to keep up with the trims at a, a faster rate. I really cannot stretch more than two months without seeing like damaging effects on my hair. So I've already gotten a trim twice this year. Um, and I need to get another one very soon. So, uh, yeah, I will probably, by the end of this challenge, have trimmed my hair four or five times rather than the three max. And that's just the, the consequence of getting your hair bleached twice. That's, that's on me, you know what I'm saying? But if your hair is healthy, if you ain't done nothing stupid to it, <laughs> like me and your hair is perfectly fine and you can stretch it, then by all means, stretch it as long as you can, which the whole idea the whole heart behind this rule was don't trim your hair more than it's growing. So I'm doing pretty good. From now on, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be using heat except for like I said with the trims. I do prefer to have my hair trimmed on blow dry hair, so that is going to be staying in my regimen. Period. I um, won't be getting my hair bleached for the rest of this challenge, but I will be using temporary hair rinses, so I'm still on track with that rule. I'm gonna keep conditioning, deep conditioning and shampooing regularly, and that's one to two times a week, including protein treatments. I will be uh, trimming my hair as needed only, and I'm gonna be protective styling as well. So that's how I'm doing on the hair growth challenge. And so before I end this, part of the video. I'm going to do a link check and just give you an update on how it's growing. So last time I know I took a section on this side and I can already tell like wow my hair is it has grown since I did that video and I know that I started off with seven and a half inches last time but we're gonna see how far I've grown from seven and a half inches right now. How am I gonna do this? It's not as easy as it looks, kiddos. Okay, so I have it sitting up against my scalp. And I'm just gonna pull it down. Yeah, this is this is much more difficult <laughs> than I thought. Okay. Alright. Oh wow! Okay, why well, I'm special because I did it starting from the 12 inch side, but if I'm not mistaken, I think my hair has grown. My hair is now 10 and a half inches. Wait a minute. I'm excited. Hold on now. Let me, let me do that one more time. I don't want to deceive the people. The people want the truth. <gasps> My hair is ten and a half inches long. That's exciting. That means even with my stupid decisions and with more frequent, frequent, more frequent trims, I've been able to retain about three inches of growth. And that's in eight months. So that's super exciting. Okay. Okay, anyway, so that's how we're doing. That's how we're growing. I think I might actually track, you know, track. I think I'm tracking for my goal of four and a half inches for the year. Oh my gosh, that's exciting and motivating. Oh shoot, oh shoot. Okay, anyway, but that's all that there is for this particular video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that update on the Hair Growth Challenge. Again, get involved down below. Let me know if you're joining last minute. Let me know how it's growing. Let me know if you're doing well, if you're not doing so well, if you're about to quit, but you're gonna keep going anyway. <laughs> Just let me know how it's going down below. And feel free to post your own things on Instagram, your own videos on YouTube, and use the hashtag GrowthUpInches2019. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.